counted as one of the Olympic sports, judo is winning worldwide popularity as the martial art which enables a small man to throw a big, strong one. Judo is a sport for training the body, a martial art for guarding the body from injury, and a way of mental discipline leading to self-perfection. When judo is being discussed, the expression seiruko zenyo, putting force to good use, is often mentioned. The meaning of this is interpreted in different ways. One is considered to be a rational use of strength. Judo is a system of winning by means of movements which reduce an opponent's effective power, not of his strength alone. It is by taking advantage of the moment in which such a movement is made that you can upset your opponent's balance, thereby reducing his power, and by applying a judo technique, you can win. The greatest effect can therefore be obtained with the least amount of strength, and a person with a small, weak body can throw a powerful opponent. What then are the movements that will reduce an opponent's power? In judo, it is fundamental that if your opponent moves forward, you move back, and if he moves back, you go forward. Taking advantage of that movement by destroying your opponent's balance and apply a judo technique to win. In this game, the winner is decided by knocking the other off balance. The average child who knows nothing of judo moves his body very much, and his balance is therefore wildly upset. Now here is a judo expert. In response to the same amount of movement, his body shakes far less and he keeps his balance very skillfully. Look once again at the judo technique in slow motion. being thrown after his balance was upset, and in the moment that his power was weakened, a judo technique was applied. Judo throwing techniques are all based on this principle, but in the Tsupami Gaeshi technique, the Okure Ashi Barai is countered and absorbed, and in the moment when the attacker is then off balance, the technique is applied. Kodokan Judo was established in 1882 by Jigoro Kano. He had a deep interest in the ancient Japanese traditions of Jiu-Jitsu. In 1882, after his graduation from Tokyo University, he moved to the Eishoji Temple. There, by fusing the military skills of Jiu-Jitsu, with a wide range of moral principles, he established a new martial art, Judo. Dangerous jiu-jitsu techniques, such as this forearm twist and body blow, are not included in Judo. Their forms remain, but they themselves are forbidden. Garami coil arm lock and the Ude Hishigi Juji Katami arm cross lock are judo techniques, but it is because they are not dangerous that they still remain. The kata, fixed exercises, are to judo what grammar is to writing. The kata are prearranged exercises and are a way of showing the outcome of the application of particular techniques. They are the combined results of the studies of judo men down the years and form the basis of judo. That is why these exercises are said to be the quickest way to make progress. There are many including the nage for throwing, the katame for holding, the kiwame, the iwara, and the koshiki.
The Kōdōkan stands in the heart of Tokyo. It is the mecca of judo. On the second Sunday in January, the observance of Kagami Baraki, or setting out the rice cakes, is kept. There is a speech by Mr. Kano, the head of the Kōdōkan, to all followers of this path. And the representative of judo students delivers a greeting to mark the new year. Following this come demonstrations of the fixed exercise forms in the main practice hall. The demonstrations are given by holders of high judo ranks. For members of the junior ranks, Kagami Biraki is also a chance to show the results of their training during the year just passed. Then everyone takes sweetened red bean soup with rice cake. This symbolizes their hopes for another year of hard training and for increasing strength. In the old days, judo students would present their teacher with a large rice cake to express their gratitude for the year just gone. Now the students begin training practice. Sitting in the correct posture, the students put themselves at ease and prepare themselves mentally before they begin. In judo, in order to be able to move suddenly from rest to motion, it is necessary to loosen the normally little used joints in the neck, arms, legs and hips, and the muscles in the back and abdomen. This is practice in falling. The arms are opened wide and the mat is hit hard with the flat of the hand. This softens the impact of the body on the ground. When the two arms are not used, the impact of the body is great. And in reaction, the body bounces a number of times. But if both arms are spread out and strike the mat, the impact is softened and the fall becomes an easier one. It is important that sufficient time be devoted to learning how to fall something which is essential to free practice exercises. This is free practice. Students pair off and techniques are freely selected. The ways of upsetting an opponent's balance and making winning throws are learned. This is practice in the techniques of grappling something different from the throwing techniques. Grappling techniques are one of the special features of judo. The grappling techniques occupy an important place in judo. Practice in them and in the throwing techniques is indispensable. The grappling techniques will decide a win by robbing an opponent of his freedom of movement for a fixed length of time. The grappling techniques include the holding techniques, the strangle holds, and the arm lock techniques. The switch to a grappling technique comes when a throwing technique has not brought the desired results or has not been properly applied. Judo is popular not only with men, but with women too. These are the fixed exercises used in self-defense practice for women. This method of self-defense is composed principally from the arm lock techniques, strangle holds, and body blows.
Fifteen exercises make up the fundamental fixed exercises, and with these as a basis, techniques can actually be applied according to the situation to knock down an attacker. This is the International Division of the Kodokan. Every day, between 30 and 35 overseas students come through the doors of the Kodokan to put in some hard practice. Now living in Japan, they have come a long way from their own countries to study Judo. Some want to become Judo instructors. Some want to become international class Judo athletes. Each works as hard as he can at the training. Today, in France, America, Britain, Holland, Belgium, Italy, in a hundred other countries, there are five million people following the path of Judo. Six o'clock in the morning, a perspiring group goes running through the cold air before the dawn. Mr. Okano, an Olympic gold medalist, is one of those who are giving their assistance to train judo athletes from overseas. Mr. Okano offers them the use of the rooms in his own apartment and looks after the foreign judo men who have come to Japan to study. At the same time, he spends every day training them. Now that judo is a worldwide sport, Japanese and foreign judo men are studying together to improve their art. They started to do this some years ago, when Holland's international judo sportsman, Anton Giesink, came to Japan. Improving skills is not by itself enough to enable a judo man to win his matches. It is also important that as a person, he should become enriched spiritually. This is one of the things Mr. Okano teaches his students while he trains them. To conclude, let us look at a judo contest. Judo matches take place in a space nine meters square. A contest is usually held with one chief umpire and two assistant umpires in attendance. The length of a match should be no less than three minutes and no more than 20. Speed and strength will decide the winner when a throwing technique is used. If one of the contestants is thrown flat on his back, the other gains a full point. The winning point can also be gained either by holding an opponent down by a holding technique for 30 seconds, or when having had an arm lock put on him, he signals Maita, enough. When time runs out before a match has been decided, the result will be either a win on superior technique or a draw. The form of a technique, the attitude of a contestant during the match, and the skill he shows will also help to decide the winner. The loser, realizing the reasons for his loss, will study all the harder. The winner will take more care than ever that nothing is neglected in his studies. And as he goes deeper into judo, the future will constantly open up new prospects before him. <laughs>